Thanks, Molly, and I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. It's a wonderful workshop. And um, so uh, this afternoon, I would like to uh, talk about uh, different models I've been working on for the evolution of gene expression in eukaryotes. And in fact, when, what I mean by eukaryotes is mostly diploids, because I'm interested in, in the specific effects of diploidy in eukaryotes. So first, I'd like to acknowledge some colleagues that have been contributing to that work. Frédéric Fion, who is a PhD student working in different parts of that project. Denis Rose, uh, who is a, is a colleague, has been doing a lot of theory together. Uh, Ericsson was a, um, a student when I was last year at Harvard to work on this project. And Gabriel Marais, who has been uh, very helpful to discuss different things. Uh, uh, see later. He's working mostly on sex chromosome, but you'll see that will be the topic of the day. So um, overall, I've been working on uh, different uh, kinds of model where uh, the specific feature of those model is to uh, take seriously uh, quote, the, the issue of uh, uh, cis and trans effect uh, in diploids in eukaryotes. So as you may know, if you consider that you've got a, a, a gene in a, uh, which is expressed in a diploid, then typically you will have a cis regulatory sequence uh, and a transcription factor, and the transcription factor will bind or interact. Uh, in cis and to control the expression levels of uh, the gene. And so most population genetic uh, models do not, uh, well, apart from few uh, cases, uh, incorporate this uh, little uh, specificity of cis and trans effects. And so the, the idea is to, to, to incorporate those effects and to see uh, how they transform and change the view we have on a well, standard model of population genetics. And in fact, there are a lot of a lot of questions that you can revisit with that kind of model. And um, so some uh, have been published. So for instance, uh, this one and this one. And much of this is still ongoing work. And uh, it, uh, it mainly talks about the specific features of uh, regula regulation in, in eukaryotes. And, uh, but so in the inter interest of time this afternoon, I won't have well, I was considering to make kind of a survey of the different models I've been playing with, but in fact, I will mostly concentrate on one of them, which is the evolution of sex chromosome degeneration, because uh, it's well advanced now, and it's really illustrating the, the, the point I want to make, and so new, new results as well. So, um, um, as you probably know, sex uh, chromosomes are, in many cases, degenerate. Here I represent a, a species where you got X and Y, but uh, the case applies for ZW species. And the X is typically uh, recombining in females and is fully functional, while uh, there is no recombination in males on the, uh, between X and Y, and the Y is, is usually considerably degenerate. And so uh, uh, there is kind of a standard theory that is well known for explaining uh, why you got this degeneration, and the, the standard theory involves six steps. So the first idea is, of course, that you first have a, a first uh, arrest of recombination uh, between the X and Y. And most models consider sex antagonistic selection for this, although there are various <laughs> other ideas around. And uh, then the absence of recombination on the Y causes selection interference, Murrell's <laughs> ratchet or A. Robertson effects that will um, cause selective, inter selective interference on the Y. This selection interference will uh, cause the uh, accumulation of deleterious on the Y, and this accumulation will lead to gene loss. Some people have, have, been proposed, have, have proposed that you may have a, a selective silencing of those uh, you know, um, uh, gene copies that have uh, received a lot of, accumulated a lot of deleterious mutation. And then you got the, uh, globally a lack of functional genes, gene copy on the Y, and which cause a problem of dosage imbalance in males. And so you've got the evolution, uh, the secondary evolution of dosage compensation mechanisms, and you've got various types of uh, dosage compensation mechanisms to restore dosage uh, between uh, sex chromosome and autosomes. So that's the usual story, and uh, it has been around for decades right now. And, uh, and, and, and which is also something that I received a, a lot of indirect confirmation of uh, different sorts. And there are specific features in that theory is that uh, because it, it works, be, um, it's caused by a selective interference, it's, it's really, uh, the, it works really better 
uh, with smaller population sizes. And uh, I would ju just like to point out, that, uh, point out that silencing here occurs second in most uh, models that have been produced, and that dosage compensation occurs third in that kind of uh, causal framework. So to work on this, I, I um, introduced this, again, this, this way of modeling things, where we got a, a gene copy, a gene, which is uh, under, uh, controlled by the cis regulator and the trans regulator. And you assume that this uh, gene is, uh, sits on a sex chromosome, that you are considering uh, what's going on in this uh, uh, new sex chromosome uh, just after it became a sex chromosome, right? So it's not yet degenerate. And then here you consider that the transcription factor, the gene for the transcription factor is unlinked and is on another chromosome, on another chromosome. Of course, uh, you can uh, upgrade this model for having multiple genes con controlled by different transcription factors. So to reflect the fact that perhaps you got a whole chunk of um, a stratum on the neo Y, which uh, where uh, recombination is stopped. So you, I will uh, show you results with various number of uh, uh, such modules. So you got uh, two uh, recommendation rates that are very important here. The recommendation rate between the cis regulator and the gene, and this is something which is typically very small, because uh, usually the cis regulator are very next to the gene. And you got the, dist the, uh, the distance between the two genes, the uh, RG here. And of course, because we are in a, a model where you got female and males, uh, you, this rate of recommendation are zero in males, okay? On between the, because there is no recommendation in male. They are just in female. Now you consider the, that you got deleterious mutation on the gene, so they occur at some rate, and that you got the typical situation where you got an, uh, various deleterious mutation that you can sample in a, in a distribution. And here the idea is to, uh, that you can uh, accumulate them up to a point, which is a S max, which is a maximum uh, effect of unfitness when this gene is completely uh, degenerate. Okay, which is not necessarily lethal. So if you've got multiple hits, you may end up with an effect S max, but it won't be larger than this. And then you've got mutation on the cis regulator, and to model this, you consider uh, that uh, there is a kind of a quantitative trait, which is C here, that measures the strength of that cis regulator. And that will mutate like with a norm. Uh, when you introduce your mutation, it will have an unbiased uh, effect uh, drawn in a no normal distribution. And you want this particular strength to, to stay uh, positive. So in different version of the model here, you, you ignore values that are negative. You, you set them to zero if they are. And uh, so now you got, because you are in the diploid, you got to consider the fact that he, you, when you've got, uh, you are, you've got the same allele as the cis regulator, you will express 50% defective protein if you, go, if you are an heterozygous individual with a deleterious allele A, uh, green here. But if you got a stronger regula cis regulator, like for instance, C1 here is stronger than C2, then the, 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 the amount of defective protein, the green one, will be higher than 50%. And uh, the reverse, if the, the, the stronger regulator is C2, then you, you the wild type, you've got less um, than 50% um, defective protein. Because that's just the definition of the model, that the strengths of the cis regulator just uh, uh, provide higher or lower expression levels. And so if this little a is a deleterious mutation on the gene, then if you got more defective protein, you expect that the fitness effect of the individual, an individual like this will be lower than if the, the, uh, it was a 50% uh, defective protein. And the reverse, if you got fewer of those defective protein, your fitness will be higher. So in terms of dominance, it's, it's as if here you got a slightly higher dominance for the deleterious mutation, here a slightly lower dominance of the deleterious mutation. And to uh, link up the different uh, possibilities here, you, you, you make it continuous between, uh, so that would be the percent of uh, 
defective proteins. And here would be the fitness with the three values, one, one minus HS in a standard uh, heterozygote, and one minus S for the um, zygote here. And depending on where you are on the fraction of defective protein, you will have a different value for fitness. Now you got mutation on the regulator and uh, on the trans regulator. And again, here you, you consider the same, that you, is, is there is a quantitative trait T that mutates with a normal deviate, and uh, uh, you keep it positive as well. Here, the difficulty is that uh, this transfer regulator is here to uh, model dosage compensation. So there are very, uh, various possibilities for different options, if you like, according to uh, the different uh, ways um, you, have, you can observe dosage compensation in nature. So for instance, there is this, for, to, to make a caricature, you got the C. elegans model, the Drosophila model, or the mammal model, where you got the, trans the transcription factor only expressed in females for this one. Here, it will only target the X in male, and here it will only target one random X in females. All right? So I will only concentrate in the, in the first one, uh, to give you, because that's basic, uh, to get, uh, I don't have time to detail more. So, so to have an idea of what dosage, uh, what dosage, um, how you can compute dosage, so you got two versions of this two allele, that's the transcription uh, factor. So in female, to have the overall amount of protein produced would be C1 plus C2 times T bar, with the mean of those T values. But it's only in female because the transacting factor is only uh, acting in females. All right. The last bit is that you've got selection on dosage, of course, because if you got, if, if for each gene, you assume that there is an optimal quantity of protein to be produced, and that you've got an optimal value here, which, which is set to one, so on overall it will be two for the two copies at the individual level, and that um, you got a different strength of intensity of stabilizing selection around that optimum, and that uh, uh, a very specific feature here is that you want that when you got zero expression, means that it's, the gene is completely silenced, you don't want the fitness effect to be stronger than the maximal fitness effect you'd like, you, you could have on, uh, on the gene itself. All right, so that's, so now we'll turn to the results. And um, so here is a, a simulation that has been with or uh, average over many, many replicates. So what you see is, a, so it's a quite large population. So you've got some mutation rate for the different uh, uh, loci and, uh, well, different parameters. And what you, when you, what you look at here is, an, so that's uh, across one million generation. And so that's a, a probability for what I call half silent, silent, half dead, and dead mean. So half silent means that the, the gene on the Y is uh, halfway through, through silencing, and silent is that it's completely silenced. Half dead means that it has uh, accumulated the mutation to the point where it reached S max over two, and uh, dead is when it's at S max. And so what you see is that you do see a uh, uh, degeneration of the of the of the Y, and that first you got this uh, evolution of it's first silenced, then it's fully silenced, and then, and then of course when it's silenced, it accumulates a lot of the mutation, and so it goes kind of the other way around compared to the traditional uh, view of the process, and it's uh, on, here only occurring for just a single locus, so there is very limited uh, selective interference at play here. And you got two very important controls for that kind of simulation. The first one is that when you set the mutation rate of the cis regulator to zero, then of course nothing happens. And more interestingly, if you set artificially the recognition rate between the cis regulator and the gene 2.5, meaning that they are unlinked in female, then nothing happens. So the conclusions are from the, that kind of results are that Compared to standard theory, you, you can have wide degeneration with a single gene, so without a lot of selective interference. That silencing occur, occurs first, not second, and that dosage compensation occurs simultaneously. And it requires the evolution of regulatory sequences, and it requires tight linkage between the cis regulator and the gene in female. 
Now we would ask what is the dependence of that process on population size, because it has been a very important issue for that kind of theory based on uh, selective interference. And here what you can see is that when you increase population size, there is an effect of population size, so it slows down in larger population. Also, when you change two order of magnitude uh, in terms of population size, you, got no, you don't have a two order of magnitude increase in, in degeneration time. Now you may ask what, what's going on when you've got many loci. All those results were for one locus. So if you've got one, one gene, so that's a, uh, the fraction of the probability of being dead for a, a given gene, so it's completely degenerate. Uh, so that's for one gene, the result I, I showed you previous, previously. So if you've got 10 of them in, in a stratum, so it goes faster. If you've got 100, it goes even faster. And when you've got 1,000 genes, it goes even faster. So, so this process works in combination with selective interference, means that if, we, if you add the selective interference into the picture, then of course uh, things will uh, go even faster. Also important to note here that in absence of, uh, in absence of a regulatory evolution in those simulation, nothing would, would occur here under those parameters uh, even with uh, many, many 1,000 genes like this, okay? So now there is another, uh, you, another effect that you could look at is uh, the effect of the intensity of uh, stabilizing selection on, on dosage. And so uh, what's turn, it turns out that the, this uh, rate of degeneration is maximal at intermediate level of uh, stabilizing selection. So when, it's, when stabilizing selection on those edges is weaker or stronger, then the rate is lower. So different ways to interpret this. I don't have time to discuss that much. So what's the mechanisms behind this? First, uh, a good starting point to understand what's going on is that you can look at the, uh, what's the dominance from the point of view of a Y chromosome. So that what would be the dominance of a deleterious mutation on the Y? Uh, okay. So the initial value would be uh, one quarter, because that was the initial value set in the simulation. And so that's uh, what you observed. So, so that mutation, mutation on the way becomes recessive over time, and that's the reason they will accumulate. And when you look at uh, what's going on more specifically on the traits that are uh, uh, in the model, so you got the, the, regula the cis regulator on the X that goes to, so it starts at one, it goes to two, so that you got an optimal dosage in male because it has a single X. So now the optimal dosage is two in male, but it's all right because the optimal dosage is two. Uh, the cis regulator in, on the Y goes to zero because it's, it's become silenced. And the trans uh, acting effect in female uh, is the actual dosage compensation. It goes to one half as in the in C elegance where you got uh, a reduction of expression to half to, compens to, to restore the correct dosage because the, the regulator on the X has, has gone stronger. So the mechanism here is that cis regulator runaway on the X is compensated by trans regulator in female and by Y cis silencing in males. And so what I mean by cis um, regulator runaway is the fact that when you got the stronger cis regulator, and that's true also on autosome, something we've been showing in other models. When you've got deep root selection, a stronger cis regulator is always favored because it will, uh, on average, sit uh, on a chromosome which is better purged from the latest mutation because the gene uh, that it uh, controls uh, will be more exposed to selection. So on autosome, this process leads to the escalation of the cis regulator strengths, provided that it can be compensated by trans effects. And here on the sex chromosome, it just leads to Y degeneration. And it's, of course, a self-reinforcing loop, because when you've got a partially silenced gene accumulate, uh, that has start to uh, accumulate, um, when well, it's partially silenced, then it will be even uh, easier you know, to fix the little mutation uh, later on, because it's, now it's partially hidden from selection. All right, so the conclusion is that this uh, new way of modeling expression evolution, uh, so you take into account uh, the cis regulatory impact on dominance, and in diploid, it does matter, as, as uh, I hope I've convinced you. Uh, you got many applications of that idea, and so this sex chromosome is just one of them. I got uh, other project work on the 
or you could explain the extravagant regulation of eukaryotes uh, as a consequence of this process as well. It's not super clear what the level of selection here is exactly because those cis, uh, cis regulators are really favored uh, positively, if you like, although it's not necessarily favorable at the individual level. Uh, and so for the wide degeneration, gener so it's different from standard theory. It adds, if you like, a, a, a possibility on the different option we have on the, for the theory of size chromosome. Um, so this theory is uh, provide fast degeneration and divergence among X and Y. It's based on this regulator runaway on the X. And in this theory, silencing occurs first, not second. And uh, it also requires the arrest of recombination between X and Y, otherwise it doesn't work. And uh, it works for perhaps larger population sizes than the current theory does. Okay, that's it. Thank you.